Okay, so picking up where I left off with the duplicate observations, um, what's next is I'm actually going to reverse the string. So you'll see why in a second. But what's going to happen is um, it's basically because there's no analog of the tail function in egen ends. So the tail, you know, the head function will take the first word, and the tail function will take everything after the first parsing string. So the default is a space. So the tail will take everything after a space. But there's no way to take everything before the last space. Right? There is a way to get last, which is just the, the last word after the last space. Um, but there's no way to get everything before the last space. So what I have to do is actually have to reverse it, and then I'll take the tail and then reverse it back. Right? So I'm going to generate the duplicate observation number, which is going to be the end of the nip name. Um, I'm going to take the head, right? because it's been reversed. So if it had been Joel Smith 4, then it's now going to be 4 space h-t-i-m-s space l-e-o-j and I'm just going to take that 4 and then the tail will be everything else and then um, if I'm not missing duplicate observation I'm going to replace my nip name with dupes obs rest which is going to be all that stuff except for the observation number and then I'm going to reverse it back here in line 100 okay um, and then I'm going to drop the nip name last and nip name first functions that I came up with before during the backward phase um, okay, so I've now reversed the string back here in line 100. I'm going to reverse it again for whatever reason. You know, I could have gotten rid of both of these, but it makes it clearer, I think, intuitively to have them both show you that I'm ending the phase before and, and beginning this one here. Okay, I'm going to replace my nip name with the reverse of my nip name and trim it to take off the leading and trailing spaces. Okay, I'm going to say if my nip name was weird, what I'm going to mean, what I'm going to eventually settle on for weird. Um, being zero is, you know, there's no comma and it doesn't end in a dot. Um, those are probably just going to be the cases where we have first, middle, last. You know, most of them, it's going to be last, comma, first, middle. But I'm going to say that all the ones pretty much in weird, you know, since I've looked through it a couple times, it looks like all the ones where weird equals zero are first, middle, last. Okay, so what I have to do is I have to say, I'm going to treat those differently than I treat the ones that are last, comma, middle, first. So, if weird equals equals zero... Then, since I've already reversed it, I take the head of it, so I take the first thing, and I make that the last name, okay? Because if I had, um, you know, like, say Joel Smith again, H-T-I-M-S space L-E-O-J, uh, then I'm going to take the head of that, which will be the backward Smith, and make that my last name. And then the tail of that, everything after that first word, where I consider that first word the last name, will be the first and middle name. And then I'm going to reconstruct minip name as the reverse of that thing that I came up with as the last name, then comma space, and then the reverse of everything I came up with as the first name, only if weird equals equals zero, and I'm not missing the manipulation name. Okay, so that basically is going to treat, um, you know, that's how you say I might have all last, um, I might have some last comma first middle, and I might have some first middle last. Either way, this script that I came up with will actually treat them both and find... Um, find how to reverse the strings if it's first, middle, last, um, and isolate the first and last names in either one, no problem. You don't have to go through and find them before. This will do it for you, um, as long as you have other things in there that are going to mess it up. Okay, and then if weird equals equals one, so that's all other cases, we're just going to take the reverse of minip name and make that minip name. Okay, and then I'm actually going to add that suffix back on and, you know, just do that um, because I do want to separate John D. Rockefeller Jr. from Sr., if I was matching this to some other data set, I would want them to be different. I would want them to show up differently. Okay, now here's the real thing we've been waiting for. Line 114, I'm gonna split my nickname on the comma and generate a variable called last. And um, it actually just so happens that, you know, I've looked through and there aren't any other commas other than the one in the data that I've been working with. So I don't have to drop last two, last three, last four, last five. There are no extra commas after that first comma. So that's actually great because I've ensured that there will always be a comma here, um, and now I'm also seeing that there's only one. And then I'm gonna rename last one last name and rename last two first name. And if that's all you wanted to do is get the last name and first name out of there, then you're actually done. But um, what I go on to do is pretty simple. I'm just gonna basically add back all that stuff I took off. I'm gonna trim the nip name and add a space and then what was in the parentheses. And then I'm gonna add if they're deceased and then their observation number and then the other, which was like the end wife Minip name two, and then care of all that stuff, and then trim the minip name at every step. 
and then just drop all these other variables that I made. So that's pretty much how you do it. I'm gonna make another video where I show you what the outcome is on the data that I have, but hopefully that's helpful to you, and good luck using it.